Hey, it's Kim and I'm back. So get your coffee, your snack, your tea, and enjoy this next 10 minute tip. tips for your relationships 10 minutes okay so in the uh, past few weeks we've been talking a lot about communication and yes communication is very important to relationships all relationships remember we're not only trying to give information that helps your romantic relationship your your significant other your husband your wife your boo whatever you call that person um, but we are giving out information that also addresses how you engage other folks, your family members, your children, your neighbors, your co-workers, your church family. I mean, you know, you can use this information with everyone that you come in contact with. So today I, I want to kind of focus in on just one area of communication because I feel like it's really important that we not just talk about communication in the way of um, how we talk or our conversations. Um, because in times past, like I said, we've been talking about being a good listener and how a great deal of communication um, has a lot to do with listening, a lot to do with listening. And it does because we talked about before how, you know, when you and, and your uh, the other person you're talking to are trying to have a conversation, but you're not really listening to them. You're not listening for their feelings, but you're listening to give a response or you're listening to react or sometimes you react without listening. <laughs> so yes, we've talked about being a good listener, which is extremely important. And we've talked about being such a good listener that you're able to reflect what that person has said to you. Um, you're able to reflect not just their words, but their feelings that go along with those words. So yes, we're going to continue with con communication because I don't know, me just personally, I feel like communication is a huge part of having a great, long-lasting, loving, uh, you know, uh, great relationship. And so the more we hone in on those skills of communication, the better our relationships will be. So the one thing that I want to talk about today is being able to express yourself. And that's not easy for a lot of people. Um, sometimes we get frustrated, we get intimidated. And I know guys, women are good at this. <laughs> we can just shoot, shoot, shoot off answers and we can reply to things really quick. Um, we've been known to have some quick wit being able to just say things, you know, and it seems as if we're able to, to say things without thinking. And sometimes we're guilty of saying things without thinking. But today I want to talk about being able to express yourself because being able to express yourself is a skill. Yes. And you know what, if you're not so good at it, then maybe you could try some of these tips to help yourself become better at it. So number one, the very first thing I want you to do when you are considering expressing yourself in a conversation or you and your mate are having some type of discussion, working something out, I don't know, is I want you to show understanding before requesting understanding. Now that doesn't sound, you know, like you're gonna be on the winning end. <laughs> But no, it really, what it does is it takes the other person's defense level down. So showing understanding before requesting it is one of the ways that you do avoid the other person becoming defensive. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, I can open up a conversation with saying, you know what? 
I know it's difficult sometimes for you to remember to call me, you know, when you're going to be more than an hour too late getting in. I know it's difficult because you have a lot going on, but it really would make me feel better if you could do that. I wouldn't worry as much. Something simple like that. Because what I did in that, that statement is I showed, you know, understanding before I requested understanding. Now, don't get me wrong. I still requested a need, but I showed understanding to the person that I was talking to. So show understanding before you request it. Number two. Number two, I want you to advocate for your feelings. Not the world, not your girlfriends, not your your uh, your your fellow friends, <laughs> whatever you call them, your dudes. Um, I want you to advocate for you. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you're going to talk about how you feel, what your feelings are. Not, you know, my friend, she felt the same way I did, or most women feel the way that I do. And, you know, even in that, you're going to talk about your feelings because one of the things I always say is, you know, you can't fault a person for their feelings. You can't tell a person that their feelings are right or wrong. It's what they feel, right? So when you're expressing your feelings, you're going to advocate for you, yourself. You're going to express that you're feeling neglected or you're angry or you're sad or you're irritated or a burden or you're overwhelmed. Not what the world feels, not even about what's correct or what's right for this situation. So we're just honing in on our own feelings because what that does is it also lessens the defensiveness because now that person that you're talking to doesn't feel like, you know, you're advocating for the world. And that sometimes makes people feel like they're carrying the burdens of making all women feel uh uh, like they're not neglected or making all women feel like they're loved and, and cared for. No, it's just you, the one person, and you're speaking up for yourself. So you're talking about your feelings. You're not talking about your best friends. That emotionally impacted statement about you, which is extremely important. So advocate for your own feelings, not everybody else. Number three. State your feelings if they're important to the issue, okay? Because sometimes we can get sidetracked on some other stuff. <laughs> Things that don't even relate to the discussion. So yes, like those feelings we just talked about, neglected, loved, cared for, feeling burdened or overwhelmed. State those feelings if they are indeed related to the discussion that you're having at the moment. Not, I always feel neglected or you never make me feel loved. Not that, we're not gonna go there, but we're just gonna talk about those feelings that are related to this particular situation. Stay focused. Number four, number four, and I'm gonna stop here for this week, but we're gonna carry this on for next week. Number four is, can you just be clear about what you wanna see changed? Sometimes we are not clear. Sometimes we are not clear. We're not specific, you know. And then sometimes our mate or the other person we're talking to will ask us a question. Well, what is it that you want me to do? And what is that answer? I don't know. I just want it to get better. That's not clear, boo. You've got to be clear about what you want. Because if you're not clear about what you want to see changed, then guess what? that same behavior is going to continue. And see, here's the thing. We have to be able to uh, focus in on the behavior that we want to see change, not necessarily hone in on the person's intentions or their character. Because once you start fooling around in that area, what a person intend to, intends or their character, then those flags of defensiveness, defensiveness get raised. And you know what? Then, you know, all this communication that we were doing kind of goes down the drain. So, folks, look, <clears throat> not only are we supposed to be good listeners, 
Not only are we supposed to reflect, you know, what we've heard, you know, trying to really open up and, and be expressive as to what your mate is trying to say, but it's important that we know how to express ourselves and that we do the right things when we're expressing ourselves so that our conversation will be fruitful. Well, hey, check it out. These are my two minute tips. Take care, stay safe, and continue to communicate.